The Lord be with you. Today is Friday where we continue our preparation for Sunday, this Sunday being the second Sunday in Lent. Let us begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the blessings you give to us, particularly when we struggle. We pray that you lift us up by your grace. Amen. The second Sunday in Lent has for its introit portions of Psalm 25, beginning with the antiphon, Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Let not my enemies exult over me. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. Now, certainly we see the connection here with the gospel reading and the crying out of the, of the Canaanite woman, uh, asking for mercy to the Lord and, and uh, Jacob asking for a blessing from the Lord. So this is our, our prayer uh, to our Lord uh, for his mercy, his steadfast love, and that our enemies would not prevail, but rather that God would uh, redeem us out of all of our troubles. And that moves us then into the intro proper to you, O Lord. I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me. For the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Now, we pray to God for mercy. We, we uh, trust in him alone, and we pray that he would forgive us of our sins. And we recognize and acknowledge and give thanks that he is the Lord and he alone is good. And so um, it, is, it is for his sake, it is on account of who he is, that we are... Uh, pardoned our guilt, that we are forgiven of our sin. It is, not, it is not because of our own merit, our own worthiness, or anything that we do. We simply cry out for mercy, and he is gracious to hear us and forgive us. The collect of the day, O oh God, you see that of ourselves we have no strength. By your mighty power, defend us from all adversities that may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. As we have seen uh, recently with the colics during this time of the church year, a uh, simple address to God, O oh God, and this, is, this prayer is to God the Father, uh, who sees that we of ourselves, we have no strength. Now, this is, this is not always apparent to us because of our sinful nature. Uh, but in, in, in humility and repentance, we recognize we have no strength. And God, maybe even more important, uh, that God recognizes this. And so we pray that since we have no strength, that by his mighty power, he would defend us from all adversities and from all evil thoughts. Now, it's twofold. From all adversities that may happen to the body and all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. So there are adversities that happen to the, bo to the body, and we pray that he would defend us from those. Now, certainly there are many times where God delivers us from uh, bodily harm, but ultimately, uh, even if we do fall into bodily harm, even leading to death, uh, he delivers us from ultimate bodily harm, as on the last day he will raise us from the grave, and, and uh, bodily we will be risen to eternal glory in heaven. And then that he would deliver us, um, uh, defend us by his mighty power from all evil thoughts 
that may assault and hurt the soul. Now, again, uh, in our sinful flesh, we, we often succumb to these uh, evil thoughts. Um, and, and, and so we are assaulted and, and we are hurt uh, in our soul. But again, he defends us ultimately. And so this is why um, we repent. This is why uh, God drives us to repentance, so that we may be forgiven, so that we may be strengthened uh, to bear up under temptation and ultimately delivered. The gradual is also from portions of Psalm 25. The troubles of my heart are enlarged, bring me out of my distresses, consider my affliction and my trouble, and forgive all my sins. Now this uh, continues the theme then of crying out to God for mercy in all of our troubles, and, and especially focuses us on our truest and greatest need and that is forgiveness of all of our sins. The tract is from several verses of Psalm 106. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who can utter the mighty deeds of the Lord or declare all his praise? Blessed are they who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, when you show favor to your people. Help me when you save them. Now, this tract is, uh, we can think of as what is in response to the introit, to the collect, to the gradual, and that is um, thanksgiving to God for his deliverance, for forgiving us of our sins, for granting us to them, granting to us the mercy that we cry out to him for. The hymn of the day for the second Sunday in Lent is hymn 615 in the Lutheran service book, When in the Hour of Deepest Need. This hymn was written by Paul Eber, who lived from 1511 to 1569. Now, we have seen uh, the theme for this day, uh, is, is, is uh, shown well or described well in the, um, the wrestling with Jesus of uh, the Canaanite woman and then uh, Jacob and then in the epistle reading our sinful nature, our sinful flesh wrestling um, against tempt the temptations of the flesh. And <clears throat> as is, um, if not often the case, as is... Uh, at least at times the case, um, hymn writers who write some of the most beautiful hymns and the most comforting hymns for us Christians in our trials are those who themselves went through great trials. And coming out of those trials, you could say those wrestlings with God, they came to a greater understanding of the grace of God and the mercy of God and how he truly does strengthen us through those trials. So in, in that uh, vein, then, the uh, first verse of this hymn, When in the Hour of Deepest Need, When in the hour of deepest need, we know not where to look for aid, when days and nights of anxious thought no help or counsel yet have brought. Now this hymn, actually, um, the first verse does not end the thought, it's, it kind of leaves it hanging, so you got to go on to complete the thought. But um, this is how it often is in trials, that the, the, deep, the deeper the need, that um, we, we, we feel like there's no help, that there's nowhere to turn. But then in verse 2, we see that that is not the case. Then is our comfort this alone, that we may meet before your throne. To you, O faithful God, we cry for rescue in our misery. And of course, this is what we see in the gospel reading with the woman who, who simply cried out to the Lord for mercy. And so this is what we do before the throne of grace. We And, and we cry out to him knowing that he is faithful. 
Verse 3, for you have promised, Lord, to heed your children's cries in time of need. Through him whose name alone is great, our Savior and our Advocate. So again, um, we are his children, therefore we know he loves us, therefore we know he will give us what we need. Verse 4, and so we come, O God, today and all our woes before you lay for solely, sorely tried, cast down we stand, perplexed by fears on every hand. And once again, is the description that when we're in the throes of, um, of trials and even despair, uh, we, we bring it all to God. And um, we, we, since we cannot overcome them, uh, we, we leave it to God so that he may overcome it. And the answer to that, or, or I should say the way he does that then, is expounded in verse 5. Oh, from our sins, Lord, turn your face. Absolve us through your boundless grace. Be with us in our anguish still. Free us at last from every ill. And here we see the crux of the matter that whatever our trials, whatever our struggle with God, ultimately it um, hangs on our sin. That um, our sinful nature is really just wanting what our sinful nature wants. Um, and that's the problem because it, it, it leads us to sin. And what we most need from God is forgiveness of sin. And so whatever trials we are undergoing, we pray ultimately and always that God would deliver us from our sins and absolve us through his boundless grace and free us from every ill. And then finally, in conclusion, verse 6, so we with all our hearts each day to you are glad, thanksgiving, pay. Then walk obedient to your word. And now and ever praise you, Lord. And so here again, we see as with when we pray the Psalms, that uh, in deliverance, then our, our response is thanksgiving and praise and walking in the way that God has given us to live. And so it's a, a beautiful hymn and a comforting hymn, uh, focusing us um, on our true need. So when we cry out to God for mercy, that he would be gracious to us and merciful to us and forgive us of our sins and grant us strength um, to bear up in trials and also to live in a godly and holy way toward others. So let us close with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings of your Son and by your Holy Spirit, granting us uh, faith and also strengthening in faith so that we may live according to your good and gracious will. Amen. The Lord's peace be with you.